back on the Boss Man Show. It's the coach of your Georgia State Panthers downtown Atlanta last year in the sports arena over there at GSU. The ice handler himself is Rob Lanier. What's up, Coach? How's life been, man? Man, good to see you, my man. Just uh, like we were saying before when we went, on, went live, it's, uh, it's hard to believe that the basketball season is upon us. Yeah, we talked in April, and it's already uh, – October practices all been going on about a month already. Tell me about that, Coach. Uh, having your guys out there competing with each other, um, getting ready for this the fifth coming up against Clayton State here against Vince's team down there, man. So tell me about all that, Coach. Yeah, you know what? Uh, in light of everything that we've all experienced the last you know twenty months or so, um, we've had a relatively normal off season you know, with uh, summer school, with our guys being in class. I mean, actually, if you go back to the spring, where we could do some spring workouts, and the guys could get some time off. And even the time off when they were at home with their families was more normal because they didn't necessarily go home and have to isolate the way they had to do the year before. And then when they came back, they were in class. Um, it was still online for the summer, but then we, when we got to the fall, we had some in-person class and uh, for the new guys uh, and for our second-year players, they got to experience a little bit of what college feels like, going into a classroom and being around their classmates, more of a college experience, so that uh, they can feel that in conjunction with the demands of basketball that we're placing on them, they actually get the, the, the college experience. So uh, it, it's, been, it's been good. In GSU, a lot of schools in Georgia, most degrees given out in a year comes from GSU, man. So the school that you are, you're at, so many degrees come from Georgia State University in the state of Georgia. Uh, been around their fellow classmates and peers. I guess that's to be good for them young men to actually experience, like you said, college and see other people beyond their basketball brothers. Last year, it was just practice apartments. You know, can enjoy Atlanta, the college life, being downtown and getting out. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I've never seen so many guys excited to go to class. Yes. You know? uh, I think it's worn off a little bit now, but <laughs> but but at the start of the semester, guys were excited to go sit in the classroom, which is uh, which which was neat at the time. So, um, but yeah, just the energy on the campus, the excitement about uh, everything that's going on, all our, all of our sports. Um, and the support that they get from, from the student body as a basketball program, all of those things, all of that energy has been great. And, Coach, I'm going to tell you what I've told people off the record. At Georgia State had football. When I was playing football, I would have been at Georgia, Georgia State. That's where I would have went at. I would have been at Tennessee State. I would have been at Georgia, Georgia State, rather, because I could stay at home and <laughs> play in the Georgia Dome and enjoy that rather than going to Nashville. But it was good. Yeah. But if the portal was around when I was playing and at Georgia State had football, <laughs> so I would play that. Seriously, 100%. Yeah, well, we got football and we got a good program, too. You know, Sean is a heck of a coach. There's a great energy over there. And, and uh, you know, you could just see what he's building. So uh, it's just a, just a matter of time before we become one of the top football programs in a league that has some nationally ranked football program. So future is bright for football here. And I love the tire you doing the field over there, the Turner Field now, Center Park Stadium. I love it, you know. And then you're building your place down over there as well on Summer Hill. So talk about that, Coach, how you all taking over at Summer Hill over there, making that the Georgia State compound and spending your facilities, basketball arenas coming soon, 7,000, 8,000 kids and fans could be in there. And it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. I love the sports arena, but I'm looking forward to see what you're doing down there at Summer Hill as well. Well, it's a great attraction for me. Um, not, not just the, the, the Convocation Center, but like you said, the whole development of Summerhill, including the Convocation Center, the future uh, baseball facility, the grocery store, the, the, the apartment living, uh, Georgia Ave, and then obviously the environment that comes with, with uh, Panther football. So um, you, you could see it. And it was a part of my initial discussion with the administration here it's always neat when people paint a picture for you and then you actually start to see it come into fruition. Oh, yes. And, uh, there's a lot of trust that comes from that when people paint a picture and then that picture that they painted was all uh, reality. And, uh, and so it just, it, it enhances my enthusiasm and commitment uh, 
uh, to the vision that I have for basketball. And it's creating a new experience for student athletes here at Georgia State. And so it's exciting to be a part of all of that. Coach, give me, it was been three years for you already. You go ahead in year three. We did this in uh, April of 19. We got, got the job here. And now it's uh, season three now for you already, man. It's amazing how, how quickly it goes, man. It's just, uh, you know, and we talk about it all the time, trying to make the most of your time and because time is not going to stop for any of us. And so um, I'm fortunate. Got a great staff. Uh, got a great group of people I get to work with every day. Got a great athletic department with people that support one another inside of athletics and, and a great school that uh, is big, diverse, and, uh, you know, the idea that we we represent Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, is uh, it's a special designation. Most definitely. And look at, and look at this coach for me, man. Last year, you got 16 wins in the hardest year ever. COVID stoppages, you know, all that stuff. And still persevered and got 16 wins. After having some downtime this offseason, how did you kind of reflect that effect on this year saying to yourself, man, we were, I know it was, we didn't get what we wanted, but we still accomplished something this year, too, with COVID and our guys played hard for us all year long, in spite of all yeah. the things around us. Yeah, it was an opportunity to build. We only got to play 22 games. And so uh, that in itself means that nine games were canceled. So uh, we, 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 we definitely uh, dealt with some of the, the uh, downsides of a COVID year. Um, and I, I think it's a credit to our staff and to our players that as we went through it, we were able to uh, uh, be resilient and we have a good enough relationship with our guys that our seniors wanted to return. That was important. And so it gives us an experienced team. And I think you see that throughout the Sun Belt. There's a lot of veteran teams now, a lot of guys who decided to come back and want to have a year that's a little bit more normal with the fans in the arena, et cetera. So it, it was a, uh, it was a good experience and a good test for us. I, I think we learned, we all learned a lot from it. And hopefully we all have a, 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 an appreciation for the value of being able to do what we do because it is a privilege. And so uh, uh, now we'll see what we can do going forward. And, you know, I know your guys probably feel the same way, Coach. Had spring workouts are like, well, taken for granted almost. So summer, now, hey, I want to be on the court with my guys. I want to be going through individual drills because – you couldn't even have it. It got taken away from you. So for me, seeing young men tell me they they glad to be back in spring workouts, that was rare. And be so, but, I, but I, was, I get it because you couldn't do it. It's got taken away from you. And I guess that guys will value those things more than ever going forward. Yeah, I, I think it's like I was saying earlier about uh, them wanting to go to class. Yeah, You're excited. You know, the more normal it gets, you get back into the regular routine. They might lose sight of the fact that. Uh, it is a privilege. It's a great opportunity. But bottom line is what you want inside your program is enough guys who uh, have a good enough leadership qualities that have gone through this, that communicate the message to the younger guys to make the most of each day. And uh, that's what we're striving for. And having Corey Allen back and Kane Williams for their super senior year has got to be felt good for you. They say, hey, Coach Lee, I want to come back and play for you one more time. So had to make you, you and Cliff and the guys and Chris feel very good to see that happen. Yeah, it really did because, you know, we, we, we made a conscious decision that we weren't going to try to woo them back, that we were going to allow them to process that decision. If they decided to move on, we were going to be a resource for them and try to help them in any way we could moving forward because they both were going to have their degrees. And they decided on their own and enthusiastically that they wanted to be back. So it means that there's a healthy relationship there. And that's, that's important to me for sure. Um, and I know I speak for the rest of the staff when I say that. And also you have some guys in the pipeline that are young in the pipeline that you're going to be developing as well. So talk about that balance, Coach, between going grad transfer at JUCO guys or saving spots for guys who are from Georgia who want to transfer back into Georgia, along with getting young high school guys to develop in your program that you have sustainability for years to come. Yeah, there, there, there's definitely a balance. You know, um, certainly uh, there'll be times where we'll take a grad transfer. Generally, when we look to the transfer portal, we want to do it with guys that have multiple years of eligibility when, when it's 
appropriate so that they can be a part of our developmental process as well, even though that you expect those guys to come in a little bit further along than true freshmen. And we also want to have enough true freshmen that they develop inside the program and eventually become older guys who have been entrenched in our way of doing things so that they can share that information with whoever's coming into the program. So we want to have a cycle that includes that kind of balance. Most definitely, Coach. And what I love about your roster is this. It's something you do a good job of. So Amir, Josh, and Greg, Gary do a good job of recruiting Mitchell Atlanta talent having that on your roster. Talk about how important it is being a, you've been at Atlanta school to have Atlanta talent in Atlanta area guys on your roster. Yeah, it's, it's, it's vital. There's so much talent here. And then there's, a, there's also some balance there that you have to um, communicate in an honest fashion so that everyone knows exactly – how you operate and what they're getting into because you want to have the right guys in your program that fit you in such a way that they have a great experience. You don't want to have local guys in your program who aren't having a good experience, either because they thought it was one thing and it turned out to be another. So you have to be an honest communicator and you have to find people that are looking for what you have to offer locally, as opposed to getting guys just because they're local guys. You want to get guys who fit you locally and uh, not going to be right all the time. But as long as you communicate honestly, I think people respect that. And uh, by and large, some people don't like the truth, but by and large, if you communicate honestly with people, I think people respect that. And so we try to do that. And, um, and we love the local guys that we have. And I think they fit in well. And the guys that we bring in who aren't local, it's still got to be the right fit because a lot of people want to be in Atlanta no matter where they're from. You got there right, 100%. And, Coach, talk about this, man. Uh, I talked to Amir about this earlier today and Josh Passion as well about how you guys are all close together. Between you, Greg, Gary, Brian Berg, Amir talks about how you and Cliff help him out. You know, y'all want to beat each other when you, when you play, but it's not when you play, you all one big family. Talk about how between all you guys here, man, how you all are one accord and friends and compete hard against each other for guys, but still, so it's one big family of Georgia D1 coaches. Well, I can speak for myself. You know, I, I have a general respect for coaches in general, whether it's Vince, you know, at Clayton State. Um, you know, most of these guys I've known over the years prior to coming here, and it's an accomplishment to become a Division One head coach or to become a head coach at any level. And so, you know, there's a certain respect that you have to have for guys that are able to do that. And uh, it's a small window of opportunity. And so... Uh, you know, I like to see guys do well, especially when they're not playing us. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not one of those guys that's watching and rooting against guys or whatever. I got a lot of respect for Josh. I remember Josh was an AAU coach in Texas and first became aware of Josh when he was in high school as a guy who had a future as a coach. And I, I learned that from his dad. So um, it just means I'm old, but I've known Josh for, for a young time. And I, I've watched Josh coach AAU basketball. And the reality is he is a heck of a basketball coach, Josh Passman is. That's just a fact. And Amir and I struck up a relationship back when he was at Texas A&M and I was at Texas. And we talked about a lot of things because he was a young guy who aspired to be a head coach and he was a student of the profession and the game. So you could see that he was picking people's brains. And I was fortunate and honored that he felt like I was someone that he wanted to reach out to. And we developed a rapport that has maintained itself through my time here. And Greg Gary, I know from his time at Purdue, uh, I respect the job that they've done. And as assistant coaches, we've crossed paths over the years. And I have a general respect for coaches. And, um, and, and personally, I've competed against, you know, Mercer and Georgia Tech. And, uh, and I like those guys. And I really admire the job that Brian Berg has done. Like how many people have had to come into a first year job in the middle of COVID and put together a whole roster and not have an off season. If it weren't for the job that TJ did at Texas State, I would have voted Brian Berg coach of the year in the Sun Belt because of all of those circumstances that he had to endure just to go into his first season. And I think it's underrated the job that he's done. And I've told him that. 
Most definitely. I, I, just, I just love it, man, because, you know, all you guys are accessible. You know, you guys are the same kind of mindset about you guys. And, you know, I, I respect all of you. You, know, I, you all do a great job, and I'm glad to, to say a Georgia represented by you all because we we are premium of basketball here in Georgia. And having you guys at the helm of these schools, man, it's amazing to have it. We're lucky as a state to have you guys. That's our coaches around here, man, for real. Thank you, sir. And I got one more for you, Coach, man, non-conference-wise, man. A lot of good, great get, opponents you got, man. Tell me about the schedule, man. And, and Coach, I will be honest with you. When you play my alma mater, I don't know what I'm going to do that day. I, li I like you and Penny. I don't know what I'm going to do that day. <laughs> you know, I like both of you, so I don't know what I'm going to do that day. But, hey, it's not both of you got blues. So it's all good. But tell me about this schedule, man. <laughs> well, I'd rather not have scheduled them, but we, we we needed a game, and we had to find someone that worked out. The dates worked out. I, I, you know, Penny is great dude and he's building something special over there and you know I know a couple of the guys on that staff got a lot of respect for him and it's going to definitely be a, a tough hard fought game they're going to come in here and play with great energy and he's he's built a tremendous roster so we, we got our work cut, cut out for us and in general we try to play a tough schedule we want to do that you're always trying to find a level of competitive balance when you build that non-conference schedule Chris Kreider has done a great job working at it. I don't think people really understand how much goes into putting together a schedule. They just see the final result. and uh, But the reality is it's a hard thing to do. We do have a philosophy on it. And uh, so far, so good. It's going to be really challenging for us. We're going to be down a couple of guys when the season starts. So we'll be missing some key guys. So we'll have to play without them. And uh, we're prepared for that. Well, Coach, I look forward to seeing you all play, man. Last year, Sports Arena, I'm going to be cheering for you. Like I told you, man, uh, I appreciate your, your friendship and coming on my show. And uh, I'm going to be here cheering for you as well. Anything you need for me, Coach, I'm here for you, man. You know I got your back. And the Panthers are a family to me, man. My man. Appreciate you, JR. Thanks, man. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Coach. You be safe, brother. My man. All right.